Hello and welcome back to Made a Hames Out of It. This is part two of my Christmas special. And so we left um, the last episode on Wizard and I wish it could be Christmas every day and how ridiculous the title and concept of that song is. And we are now going to go straight in, straight back into the 10 Christmas single curses with Boney M. Now, Boney M have had some funky hits. So we've had Brown Girl in the Ring, sha la 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 la, and Ra Ra Rasputin, Sunny, by the rivers of Babylon. Daddy, daddy cool, daddy, daddy cool. To be fair, all the song titles could just make one awesome song, I think. We should definitely get that done. Anyway, oh, they also had Ma Baker. Now, Ma Baker is based on the infamous, infamous, infamous Ma Barker. They changed the name to Baker because it sounded better when they were singing, which is, you know, just, you know, do what you want. So Ma Barker was a supposed criminal mastermind, the mother of several gangsters who ran the Barker Carpus gang in the early 1900s. And J. Edgar Hoover, the president of the United States at the time, referred to her as the most vicious dangerous and resourceful criminal brain of the last decade. Now that is some, you know, nasty stuff right there. And it has been speculated that this wasn't true. And that was just used as an excuse for when Mark Barker was shot and killed by the FBI. But meh, what do I know? Anyway, back to Boney M. Wait, when was... So she was around in the 1900s and I think from what I read she was born in like 18 something and her kids were the gangsters at the time so they'd be around about 1920s, 1930s potentially. When was Al Capone knocking about? Wasn't he around those times? And she was named as the most vicious, dangerous and resourceful criminal brain of the last decade. I suppose I suppose it, went, it depends when he made that. I should have checked that. But anyway, back to Boney M. These guys had some serious energy and the majority of their hits did well in the charts, all being in the top 10 and having number ones with Brown Girl in the Ring. I love that song. And the infamous but wonderful Mary's Boy Child, which for some reason brought it all crashing down for them. And by infamous, I mean just in this podcast episode because it refers to it being the cursed Christmas single of theirs and I don't mean in general it's infamous because it's actually an all right song and it did get them number one spot so that's what I meant by that they didn't manage to repeat that success again at least not in the UK although they did do quite well in Sweden so all was not lost for Boney M and they are seriously funky go and check out them dancing their little tushies off on their videos they are just loving it. Next we have Band-Aid and Do They Know It's Christmas? Probably one of the most condescending patronising pieces of superiority vileness that you could ever hear at Christmas. Don't get me wrong, I have loved and sung this song many times without ever stopping to properly listen to the lyrics. But the assumption that they don't know what Christmas is in Africa is disgusting and absurd. I get the message that that we're trying to convey with Band-Aid, with Band-Aid, but please just stop. There has also been controversy around the profits that came from this single not reaching the intended recipients. But the single continues to be re-released year after year. So maybe there's, you know... Some tall tales being told um, surrounding the profits not going where they should be going. But I don't know. What do I know? The song um, Band-Aid, what's it called? I've forgotten the name of it. Do They Know It's Christmas was written by Bob Geldof of Boomtown Rats and Midyear of Ultravox. It 
apparently it led to their respective bands splitting up shortly after its release and the Christmas single curse strikes. But as previously stated, I think they're both fine. But um, so Bob Geldof uh, is worth around £150 million. So that's not too bad for him. Although Midyear doesn't seem to be doing quite as well as Bob, but I hope he's okay. Our next cursed Christmas single is one that I had never heard of. So that bodes well for this one. Christmas in Hollis by Run DMC. Now, Run DMC had enormous success with songs such as My Adidas. Although, so I say My Adidas, the song is, it's actually pronounced Adidas according to them, but meh. So my pronunci pronunciation of Adidas would not work in that song, but yeah. They say Adidas, that works in the song, good for them. And also the uh, It's Tricky song, everybody loves that. I'm sorry, sorry, everybody knows that. Probably, I love that song. And you should definitely watch the video of It's Tricky. It's Tricky, Tricky, Tricky. That's the song. It has, watch the video for cameo appearances from Penn and Teller, something I did not know. And then we also have the freaking awesome Fuck This Way that they did with Aerosmith. But this little ditty, ultimately a Christmas rap song, is just crap. I despise Christmas rap music. I like, I like, I like rap music in general. Eminem, big fan, but I can't ever see him with a Christmas single. So, after Run DMC brought out Christmas in Hollis, Hollis being a middle class neighbourhood in Queens, their fans were like, what the sleigh bells? It entered the charts at number 36 in 1986 and they didn't have another hit until over 10 years later with the super cool It's Like That remix by Jason Nevins. Sadly, Jam Master, Jam Master? No, can't talk now. Jam Master J from Run DMC was shot dead in 2002. So the Christmas single curse did kind of, you know... Play a number over on them. Get a number over on them. Play a number over on them. Pull a number over on them. It did something to them. They were obviously tainted with the evil that is Christmas. In song form, not in general. Because Christmas is not evil. It's a lovely, wonderful time to be happy and joyous and sing nice Christmas songs. And, um, you know, give all these people some royalties because they've had their lives ruined by all kinds of shit. Okay. Michael Jackson's Earth Song. I was unaware that this was a Christmas single. And it's not so much the single that was the issue. It seems to have been his live performance of the song at the Brit Awards. And I've just noticed that I don't have the... I've not written the year down for this one. I think it was 1996. At least that's when he performed, performed it at the Brits, I believe. Um, but don't quote me on that. So his live performance of the song at the Brit Awards, he was um, dressed as the Messiah and surrounded by children, which was a bit weird. Um, well, at least it is now looking back on it when, you know, when the whole thing, everybody knows what had gone on now or supposedly went on. I'm not pointing any fingers or making any assumptions or deciding anything because I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that's all. That's no more. So prior to the Messiah-esque display, though, it was one hell of a performance. You should go and look at the live performance of Earth Song at the Brit Awards 1996. And so you, from this performance, all of his performances, you can't deny that this guy was an entertainer. He was, he was brilliant. He was brilliant. A singer, brilliant dancer. You know, he was a performer, an entertainer. He was good at it. And uh, unfortunately, the world weren't so impressed with his performance as such because of his messiah-like clothing. Although that doesn't come until the end. So you might watch the video and you'd be thinking, because I did this, because I'd read that he was like dressed as the messiah and I was watching it thinking, he's not dressed as the messiah. What the hell are they talking about? He's got like a black outfit on with looks like red bits underneath it. In fact, he looked like he was dressed as though he'd just done Thriller. But I don't think he had. But anyway, it's towards the end. So yeah, it does make sense. 
Um, but uh, after this, he, Michael continually became a rather strange person for one reason or another. His record sales dwindled and his strangeness became increasingly apparent and we're all well aware of what happened next. So maybe there is a Christmas single curse. I don't know. I also... <laughs> There was a big thing when that happened because Jarvis Cocker came up on stage, which was really rude and just a horrible thing to do. He's such a cocky little shit when he comes up on stage and starts mooning the audience where Michael's up on this big rig thing, that I, those big things, like a crate, not a crane. What's it called? A thing. Like a scissor lift? I don't know. He's on a big thing performing his heart out for this amazing song and performance and then Jarvis Cocker just sashays on stage and starts being a complete douche so it was rude anyway next we have the darkness the darkness came cascading into our lives like some glam rock sparkly unicorns and who in their right mind didn't love Or however it went. It's a fabulous song to dance around the kitchen to and belt out like a weirdo, as I just showed you. I loved it. I still love it. Um, it placed in wait, what have I it placed at number two in the UK charts and number one in the UK rock charts, which I presume is I've written this down as though I'm still talking about I believe in a thing called love and I think I am. So it placed at number two in the UK charts and number one in the UK rock charts in 2003. And I could honestly not name another single by them apart from their epic Christmas time Don't Let the Bells End, which I actually enjoy. It's a decent Christmas song. It's fun and silly, just what you need at Christmas. Unfortunately for the darkness, it pretty much brought about their demise. They did continue to, re to release singles, but after 2006, it would seem that none even placed in the charts. Justin Hawkins, the band's frontman, went into rehab and successfully kicked a drunk and a drunk and drink a drink and drug habit. So well done, Justin. They toured festivals in 2011 and 2012, and their latest album was released in October 2019, aptly named. Easter is cancelled. Did the darkness foretell 2020? Was this the actual end game for the Christmas single curse? Might we find that whoever gets Christmas number one this year will break the curse because of the prophecy that was foretold by the darkness in 2019? I highly doubt it, but it's fun to think up all of this ridiculousness. So there we have the... 10 Christmas singles that seem to have ruined people's lives, but not really ruined people's lives because, you know, they seem to be doing all right. A few others who seem to have disappeared into the Christmas fog are Matt Cardell, Sam Bailey, Shane Ward, Leon Jackson, Alexandra Burke, and Ben Hay now. Maybe they are still kicking around somewhere, or maybe they took the money and ran. Who knows? I think the majority of those people that I just listed were X Factor winners. Um, I am unsure, but at least at least three of them are X Factor winners, if not all of them. Um, but, you know, I don't know where they are now. Who does know where they are now? I'm sure many of you do know, and hopefully someone will let me know. Maybe the majority of them are doing really well, and they've, you know, they're famous in out of Mongolia or something, or Japan, or... I don't know, America. I think Leona Lewis does well in America. I don't know. But it does seem that the Christmas spot can sometimes have a negative effect on the career of some unlucky souls. They're just, it's, I don't know, it's like they, it's like it becomes cheesy and people think, oh, they release a Christmas single, oh, they're sold out now, that kind of, I think that's probably what it is. And I just want to point out here that the original source for my idea around this episode was an article in The Guardian from 2002. So there's not, so from there, it's not been 
information of Christmas singles since that time. But it sounded like a good topic to cover, but as I went through each one in the article individually, it got more and more ridiculous and seemed that the journalist was reaching way too much. But once I started, I had to see it through. And I think I've managed a pretty good roundup of some Christmas singles and also torn down some curse myths which is ultimately what I tend to do here. Largely, what I have discovered from this is if you're going to release a Christmas single, you should embrace it. Lean into the Christmas. Bring out all the baubles. As I mentioned at the top of the podcast, Michael Bublé and Cliff Richard always reappear at Christmas. And I'm sure they're well aware of the jokes that are made. But they don't care. Plus, Mariah Carey, she loves Christmas. Absolutely loving it. There was something um, that I heard about Mariah Carey and it was on a favourite podcast of mine, No Such Thing as a Fish, where they were talking about, um, I don't remember the full details, but they were talking about how she she like properly goes all in for Christmas and she, uh, I think it's Aspen that she goes to celebrate Christmas. And when she gets off the plane, she gets into a sleigh that's pulled by reindeer and she has music playing. And of course, it's all I want. For... That is not the tune of how that song goes. I can't um, think how that song goes now. Her song, All I Want For Christmas. Um, no, it's gone. It's, it's not in my head now because I want it to be there. So it's disappeared. But we all know the song. I don't need to sing it for you. So she gets into a sleigh and she's pulled by reindeer and listening to her Christmas music and she has like all these different Christmas trees in her house and one of them is decorated with pictures of her I think is what what was said please correct me if I'm wrong but I love that she has just completely you know embraced the whole thing and she's like yeah Christmas this is it this is me everybody loves me at Christmas well everyone loves her anyway because she's got some um great songs and music and Christmas stuff and apparently she doesn't have a she doesn't like have a concept of time there was something about that in there as well anyway completely going off track she loves christmas she you know she's just she's christmas basically she is christmas well i think that in conclusion we can all agree that christmas singles aren't cursed aside from the tragedy of the singing nun which was really quite sad the rest of these people are probably raking in the royalties or of course not being crosby neither because he is unfortunately no longer with us um, but their lives were just destined to maybe take on another path away from their previous careers i mean that happens doesn't it everything ends so maybe it was just their time and it happened to be with a christmas single they were like do you know what maybe it was that they were just like do you know what this is enough now um what can i do to stop i don't want to go on doing this anymore it's too tiring blah 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 i know i'll release a christmas single because then everyone will just everything will stop after that and it was just their way of bowing out I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. It would seem that I am yet to find a curse that is actually a curse. Most can be explained away if you're willing to just sit and contemplate. But if you wish to continue to believe what you're being told, that's cool too. Just do your research. Question everything. Don't just look at something online or something in the newspaper and believe it without a second thought. Okay, not everyone has an agenda, but most people are biased. And equally sorry not equally and equal level reporting can be hard you're bound to have an opinion that sways one way even by a small amount and with that we have come to the end of another episode i hope you all have a fabulous christmas as you're listening to this or at least if you're listening on the day of release it will be christmas day tomorrow so merry christmas as always please feel feel free to contact me and let me know all of the things that I've got wrong in this episode. I did check as much as I could because my original source was littered with mistakes. Please also send me your own personal Maida Hames moments and you could feature on a future show. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Maida Hames Out of It, on Twitter at Maida Hames, or visit the website madeahames.com or email me kate at madeahames.com. And I think that's everything. Have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year and I will see you soon. Merry Christmas!